Max Ketchup Complete Training Video Tutorial Lesson Number 4 As always what you see on the screen is where we left off in the lesson number 3 and links will be in the description and probably also on your screen right now as well. Now uh, today will be all about importing other models into your already created Ketchup scene. Uh, but before we can move on and do that, we have one problem to deal with. Since we introduced the materials in the lesson number three, we have this extremely dark floor, which looks good, um, arguably. Uh, but if I were to try to draw a line on it like this, and the line, of course, will be black, and there is no easy way of changing the color of that line in the SketchUp, uh, you will see that it's extremely hard to see that line right now. It's it, the background is just way too dark and to try to model something on such a background will be complete hell to deal with that problem we have styles now to use styles you first need to go to view toolbars and make sure the styles are checked now if you just check them they weren't checked before and uh, you see them somewhere here you can obviously just drag it and drop it anywhere you like in your uh, toolbar space so there are a few buttons over here and I'll go over them with you quickly. First one is the wireframe right here. By clicking on that button you will get rid of all the faces. You see every line in a drawing from any direction, from any point of view. And uh, well, it can be super handy and I use that style often, especially when you lost something in your drawing and you can find it where a frame can help you uh, big time. But it can be pretty difficult and challenging to pick up the actual line that you're trying to pick especially on the very complex drawings like ours is pretty simple so far so um, use it but uh, sometimes it, you'll find it very difficult next one on the line is a hidden line hidden line uh, is similar to wireframe although it does not re remove faces from the scene you cannot see through the wall but you still can see through the window uh, next one is the shaded shaded style. Now it takes away all the textures. If you remember, our floor had the planks, wood grain, and all this fancy stuff on it. Uh, now it doesn't. Uh, this style is very handy when you have a lot of materials in your scene with the texture. SketchUp can get slow with that, and that's when that style comes in handy. Next one on the list is is shaded with textures which is our default style which we use throughout lesson 3 is right here and last but not least is the monochrome style which I personally recommend using every time you're doing the modeling you don't really need the colors while you're modeling and uh, so that style can be very handy and with the help, help of this style I can now simply select that line press delete we are done Okay, so that was just a quick introduction to the styles on the SketchUp. You can download the custom styles, uh, there's all sorts of things with that, maybe one day we'll cover that as well, but for now we don't really care about that. Now there are also two toggles right here. The first toggle is X-Ray. X-Ray is again self-explanatory, you can click on it and you can kind of see through everything. Um, I don't really use that often. And the next one is the, if you untoggle the x-ray, next one is the back edges. Back edges you'll see as a dotted line. Okay, now with that out of the way we can actually import our first model into our SketchUp scene. To do that we need to go to the warehouse. Warehouse is the community driven place where you can download all sorts of free models. First go to view toolbars and make sure that you have Google checked and if you do you have this toolbar right here now today we'll concentrate on that one button right there that's called get models but we'll ignore the rest of them for now we don't really need them so click on that button right here oh yeah sorry forget about it close it uh, one thing I want to explain uh, before we move on any further if you go to window and model and four right now you will find that we have 1059 faces in our scene right now now if you remember from lesson one or two the face is this, is this part right here. So this is the one face. And you'll say, oh, well, that's 1,000, that's a lot. Where they came from? Well, it's not really that much. Uh, and where they came from, I'll give you a quick example. If we were to draw a cylinder, right? Uh, drawing a circle and just push pulling it, you think it's a cylinder, right? It has uh, the vertical part and two horizontal faces. And, uh, but realistically, if I were to select that cylinder and go to soften smooth edges, and over here, move the slider all the way to the left, you will see that there is 
there are actually a lot of faces on that one cylinder so there is I believe there's 18 faces here right now on the vertical uh, part of the cylinder and there is also two faces right here so that one cylinder contains 20 faces already and uh, due to our fancy um, uh, window frames and profiles this is where we got our 1000 frames from okay so now just memorize that number we have just over 1000 faces in our model so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to we're gonna click that button and go back to the Google warehouse over here you have an option of signing in with your Google account I'm not gonna do that right now but if you do you will have a quick access to your history to the models that you uh, made and uploaded and uh, you know you can favorite some models I believe and do things like that you can see the statistics and all that fancy stuff now over here let's say we want to find a chair and the particular chair that I want to put in my scene called the Panton chair that's one of those iconic pieces of furniture from mid-century uh, mid 20th century I mean uh, is this chair right here now you see there are quite a few of them here it's obviously a popular popular piece of furniture um, I've tested that one before and that's the one that I'm going to use right now so just click on it and here you will actually see it in a bigger version and if you uh, you can switch from image to the 3d view and if you switch to the 3d view you can actually move that chair make sure that's exactly what you're looking for and when it is just click on the download model now here it asks you the question whether you want to load it directly into your scene or you want to save it on your computer I personally see no point on saving that on my on my computer I have a lot of uh, useless uh, files already on the moment uh, already on it at the moment so I will load it directly into my SketchUp model the only reason you would ever save it is if you're planning working on it offline at some point okay so this is now the chair and I can drop it anywhere in my scene just by clicking on it boom so it's now in my scene and if I were to go to window model info you see that I right now I have 14 and a half thousand faces so that one chair brought in um, 13 and a half thousand faces that is a lot the, the reason it, it, it did that is because it's very smooth it has a lot of curves and it's it's a very good model at the end of the day but it's just very very complex in terms of geometry and uh, whether or not it's a good or bad thing it's up to you to decide but if you put a lot of those faces in your model at some point SketchUp will start slowing down and it will become absolutely impossible to work with what is this number I don't know you have to track it for yourself it obviously depends on the power of your computer so you can do the test and bring as many of those chairs and see at what point your um, your processing power will start getting low and uh, everything will be slowing down and just memorize that number and try to never reach it when you're doing the modeling so if I were to to duplicate this chair and I let's say I want the dining set and I want six of them you can imagine how many thousand of faces I will have in my model and that's just by placing the chairs then I will put the couch then I will put the couple of lamps and and SketchUp can start choking up with that so you always have to ask yourself a question is that the absolutely right chair that you want or maybe you can get away with something a little bit simpler in my case I don't really have a customer who tells me what to put in there right now so I'll just delete this chair and I'll go back to the warehouse by clicking this button and let's just type in a chair here and let's see if we can find something simpler um, nothing that can be used oh let's take that one right here so remember we had the just over a thousand faces before we um, downloaded the Pantone chair and now we have uh, erased the Pantone chair and let's go and have a look window a model info right now we have 1300 so we didn't really bring in that many faces with this chair this is very acceptable very light chair and as long as I'm not gonna have a rendering of that scene where I have a lot of uh, uh, close-up uh, views uh, uh, close-up angles on those chairs I can get away with that model now that model the terminology for those models that don't have that many faces they're called low poly 
the ones that the pan the Panton chair like they call the high poly and you can actually use that uh, as a search term in the warehouse if you would type in a low poly chair I have never tested that before oh server error what the hell just type in low poly what just happened there I didn't really lose the connection oh my god so that that SketchUp warehouse failed on me right in the middle of my lesson that's not fair what if I click here nice oh yeah it, it seems to be working now so let's try again just type in low poly yeah it works so those models are were modeled with not that many faces on them so if you're trying to find an object for your background that you won't really be able to uh, show too close those objects are the one that you're looking for and there are quite a few of them and you can probably type in low poly chair as well let's, let's try it. yeah so basically that's what it is that is a very low poly chair right here it's made out of squares okay uh, let's try to get the table right now go back to the warehouse and let's try to type in dining table and let's get this one I know I've used that before it's a very nice uh, good-looking modern table with not that many faces or polygons <coughs> on it okay and that looks good let's bring in the color for the second and let's see what we got see that chair already has some color on it and we can simply if we want to add that color to this table we can just um, keep clicking until we have this um, uh, this uh, tabletop selected and then go to the paint bucket and over here we can use the eyedrop tool and pick that color and just drop it here okay all right so with that we now have this dining set selected and uh, that was the first way of importing the models into the SketchUp as using the 3d warehouse it used to be called the Google warehouse now it's obviously called the Trimble warehouse since Trimble bought SketchUp uh, the uh, second way of doing that is finding the uh, models on the external websites on the internet. Now there are thousands of websites who would offer you models for money. There are thousands of web websites who would do that for free. Uh, I'll just give you a quick example over here. If you go to archive 3D, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, archive3d.net. Uh, that's one of the websites that I use often in my work and. Um, over here again the same thing you can type in any search criteria and you can find any model now over here you have to be twice as careful as on a uh, in a 3d warehouse because people uh, who upload model over here they primarily work in a software like 3ds max or Maya or zbrush or whatever and those are the programs that can take a high poly models a lot easier than a SketchUp can and uh, just make sure that you don't download anything way too complex and I want to just get that cup right here just click download download again and you'll see there is a WinRAR archive and UNRAR it's somewhere put it I'll put it on my desktop for now okay and in order to get it to the SketchUp you need to go to file import and just find this first of all make sure that you have the uh, 3ds selected now 3ds stands for 3d studio max and that means that uh, the files that you're just about to import into your scene are the 3ds max files and i just know that everything from the archive 3d is a 3ds so that's why i know how to select it if not you can actually just find that color in the uh, file on the computer and see there is an extension right there so this is the cup that i want to import so i've never done that before i don't know what's going to happen now if, whether or not it's a good model but we're going to give it a shot so cup right there open and you'll see there is an import process we'll go through cleaning up and we have this cup and this is actually a great example of yeah it worked perfectly but you can ask me right now why there are so many lines on it and actually looks very boxy is because that model as I said came from um, probably came from 3ds max and we still need to smooth it so just keep double clicking on it until you have the 
one part of it selected then right click and uh, go to soften smooth edges and just move that slider to the right over there so that's a nice model it's it's fairly uh, it's not very complex for for this simple object like a cup it's probably a good number of faces because you would want to have more than one cup on your table okay so we've done that so let's go to the top view and let's give each person a cup and to make it prettier I will go to warehouse one more time but just to show you one more time how to do that and let's go vase and let's get that one right here download yes directly into my SketchUp scene and I'll drop it right here and if I wanted to make it bigger I can just use the scale tool and scale it okay something like that now if we were to go to window model info we see that we're right now at 20,000 now we have six chairs we have six cups one vase and one table so it's not too bad I know that I sometimes I think I remember uh, getting at least close to the million faces and sometimes it works sometimes it may crash so you just have to be careful now with that we just covered importing the models into SketchUp from 3d warehouse and from external sources um, hope Hopefully that was pretty clear, if not feel free to use the comments, uh, I'm not gonna ask you to like or subscribe to my channel, you know I'm not doing that, and a couple more days will be another video, uh, take care.